I welcome you to this session of Practical in Science Teaching for Computer Science, SCD 305. This is the introductory aspect of the set of presentations we are going to be having for the computer science aspect of the Practical in Science Teaching. Computer, you are all familiar with computer. Right now, there is virtually everywhere, every, virtually everywhere you are, you have computer to operate with. A computer is simply an electronic device. It's a device, a machine, built for a specific purpose. And for computer in particular, computer has been designed to accept data perform prescribed mathematical and logical operations. That means the operations that a computer performs could be mathematical, could be non-mathematical, could be logical. And he does that at high speed and then re re displays the results of the operations. As a matter of fact, most of the things that the computer does, human beings can do them. But the beauty is that the computer does the processes at a very fast speed. You have three basic stages in the operations of the computer. You have the input where the computer accepts data and then it processes that data, the processing stage. And then you have the output session when it displays the output. As a non student, a student of National Open University of Nigeria, you must possess some of these basic computer skills. Your possession of them is actually non negotiable. Otherwise, you won't be able to function effectively on the program. We are talking about basic computer skills. By computer skills, it's not something that is far-fetched. We are just talking about your ability to use the hardware and the software components of the computer. So you are able to operate the body. You are able to operate the computer. Then you have those basic skills we are talking about. The hardware you are aware is the tangible aspects of the computer, the machine that you can see. But beyond that machine, you also have the software component that drives the hardware to make you have the necessary output you need to have. Um, for a non student, as I said, you don't need an agent to carry out some of the activities that we do doing now. You need to register your courses, pay on the portal, write your TMA, do the e exam, assess your results, assess some announcements online. You don't need to see an agent. You have some of the students that before they do anything, they go to visit business center. And in the process, you expose yourself. You even expose some of your uh, accounting details that should not be. You should be able, through these basic computer skills, you should be able to stand on your own to do some of these things without any assistance from anybody. And you must note that with the advancement in technology, your smartphones can now do virtually everything that you do on the computer. So that means for non students, most of these things, you can even do them on your phone. So in this session, I want to tell us that you should be able to carry out some activities. You should be able to know some things and carry some activities on the computer. I just rushed through some of them. You should be able to turn on your computer. I'm sure 90 something percent know how to do that. But for the purpose of maybe 1 percent or 1.3 percent of the remaining students, if you want to turn on your computer now, it's easier than what it used to be when computer just came in. You just look out for, you see this uh, sign here. You just look out for this on button. You see the button like this. You press it and your computer comes on. Some people may decide to password their systems. So if you don't want anybody to just gain access to it, so at that stage, you just type your password and you're able to access uh, your computer to do your work. Then, in addition to turning the computer on, you should be able to use your mouse. Um, you have here, this is a wireless mouse here. And this one is has a, you have to connect it directly to the computer any of these will serve then i must tell you too that with the laptop that we have you don't need any of this the mouse the, you already have the mouse part on the laptop built into the laptop so you just use that and you're able to do whatever you need to do and of course you're able to use the keyboard 
the keyboard, you are familiar with the keyboard, it looks like this. Those of us that used to use the, that you were used to the typewriter, it's virtually, they are similar. Though this may contain other functions that the typewriter do not actually contain. Then in addition, you should be able to use some packages. You should be able to use the MS Word when you need to prepare your document, prepare some assignments. You need the knowledge of the MS Word. And of course, quite a number of activities are carried out using the Excel. Uh, then if you have any presentation, like I'm doing a presentation now, if you are my student and I demand some presentations like this, you will need the PowerPoint to be able to um, do that. In addition to that, you know, this is an open uh, distance education system where we make use of the internet, we communicate online. So you should be able to use some of the internet facilities like the email, you must have email, of course, to be a registered student. You'll be able to use your Facebook sometimes as colleagues on the same program. You share some things together. You could go to the Facebook, the Twitter, the WhatsApp. As a matter of fact, some people say in their centers, they don't have uh, information about what is going on. They, don't, they cannot connect their counselor. You can create a WhatsApp group that, and make your counselor part of the WhatsApp group. So any development coming on that students need to know, the counselor puts it on the WhatsApp platform and then you are, you are updated with information about the goings in the system. Then of course you should be able to use your search engines to browse on the net. So some of these things you need to uh, be familiar with them. So uh, we want to do some practicals now. We we'll simply look at some of the, especially three of the things are outlined. You should be able to use your mouse, you should be able to use your keyboard, you should be able to put on your computer system. So we will we'll do some practicals now. So try to follow and once I'm true, you can try them on your own and then you will enjoy doing them. I know some of us are familiar with them, but you may pick one or two things that you are not familiar with. And even if you are not familiar with them at all, you can learn through this presentation. I welcome you to the practical session now. Now for the practical session, you would need to, I told you, you need to know how to own the computer. So to own the computer, for instance, my laptop here, what you simply do is, I told you that you should look for the own button. Yes, this, this particular button here, you look for it. If you look at my own laptop here, there is that on button somewhere here. So what you simply do is, you press the on button and your computer come on. I'm not sure anybody has issue with that. So I'll quickly go to the next aspect. You should be able to use your mouse to do some things. So I will use, I have a document here, already typed document. I will use it to demonstrate how you use your mouse. I already told you that with the advancement in technology, our laptops, you don't need a separate mouse, except if, you're, if the one the built in into your laptop has problem, then you will need an external mouse somewhere. By the time somebody starts using external mouse on a laptop, either is not comfortable with the one built into the laptop or the one built into the laptop is faulty. So for me, I have a good system to demonstrate here. So this, what I have here, you see my, my hand moving, this is what serves as your mouse in the computer uh, system. So you should be able to use this mouse to do a number of things on the computer. For instance, you may want to know the functions of some of the um, features you have on the package before, before you. For instance, you, you see me pointing at something here. This particular one, by the time I put my mouse there, it tells me what the function of that button is. You simply, it simply says you align text to the left. So the computer is quite user friendly. With, the, with this mouse navigating around the various things, you get what they are meant for. If you put it to the next one, you have, it tells you that you, you centralize, you centralize your document or that line, you bring it to the center. 
Then, if you put it to the next one here, he's simply telling you that you align text to your right. Then, if you put it this way, he simply tells you that you justify. That it, it, usually people that prepare documents recommend that because it is neither to the right nor to the left, but it is just the best way it ought to be. So, the same thing applies to the different aspects. Of by the time you move your mouse, you move your mouse around, you know what exactly the functions of these uh, various parts of the computer uh, are. Now, let me, for instance, make use of these functions here to see how you make you use the mouse to do that. Uh, you have this with this mouse to start with, you can. You can highlight, highlight what you have here. You can highlight what you have. So if you highlight this, then you can decide to put it at the center. So by the time you click this, the whole document comes to the center. But you look at this, ah, this is not what I actually like to, like to have. Then you move it to the next one. It aligns the text to your right. Look at it. See, it moves everything to the right. So if you are not satisfied with this, you can also justify by clicking this. So it usually, so many people prefer their documents to be in this form. We have several other things you can do with the mouse, but we will be expatiating more on this in subsequent presentations. Now, you also have, lastly, the use of the keyboard. You can use your keyboard to do a number of things when you have your document. For instance, you have the document right before me here. If you want to highlight all of these documents, you simply put your hand on Control and press A, and that highlights the entire document before me. You may want to underline these documents. Before you perform any operation, you need to highlight first, like we have done. If you want to underline this document, you press Control U. So with Control U, the documents are underlined. If you want to put all these words in italics, you simply press Control I, and then it puts your documents in italics. You have, if you want to undo what you have done before, you want to reverse it. The last thing you did was to put these documents in italics. If you press Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z brings you back to where you were before you put the uh, words in italics. If you press another Ctrl Z, it will simply remove the underline. See? It will simply remove the underline. If you press another Ctrl Z again, what you did initially, it will undo it. That is the highlighting. Sorry. So the Ctrl Z reverses whatever you have done before. If you want to print these documents, you can print by, you can go to the print window by pressing Ctrl P. So with this Ctrl P, you see the print window. If you have a printer, you'll be able to print. You have quite a number of things you can do using the keyboard, but we'll be dwelling more on them when we get to some of the packages that we'll be looking at in subsequent presentations. As I told you before, this is just an introductory session, it's an introductory presentation. Subsequently, we'll be looking in depth into how to use the Word package, the Excel package, the internet, the email, and how to carry out some of the activities that you must carry out as a noun student so that at the end of the day you are independent of any business center operator you could stay at the convenience of your home do all that you need to do as a noun student thank you very much see you during the next presentation